is that it is not emulating anything. It actually runs the actual operating system of the phone, which is compiled for the architecture of the PC. This is the whole operating system. What do I mean by that? I have everything here. I can go online if I want to. <laughs> this is the operating system. Yeah, I don't have the internet here, sorry. <laughs> okay? So you could play with the operating system itself a little bit if you want from here. Like. But you see that the game compiled, it, what it does is it shows only this, as you see here, it's just deleting the screen in every draw with this color. But you see how nice .NET is and how nice uh, C Sharp is. For example, you have all the colors with the names. I mean, think about it. You don't even need to set RGB values. Look at this. Firebrick. That, that's the things I love about .NET. Okay, of course you can set your RGB values if you so want, right? But if you want to make your life easy because you just want to do something, prototype something, it gives you this chance. It's a cool thing. See, Firebrick. Anyway, so as you saw, the whole framework gives you what you need to start doing stuff from the beginning quite fast. Okay? Oh my, ah, an example. <laughs> So let me give you an, uh, an example on how to use, I'm gonna give two examples about the sensors I talked before, how to use multi-touch. It, it sounded exotic to me at first. I mean, you touch and then you touch again. I, mean, I, I was used to how to use a mouse and say when you click, it's there. Okay, but when you click twice in two different places, it was confusing. Let's see how this works. So what's a touch? These are just examples, right? Uh, a touch can be something that uh, it, it has a press event when you press it, when you move it, and when you release it. There's nothing else there. It's that simple. It's the same with the mouse so far. That's different. When you actually touch your uh, finger on the screen, this finger gets an ID, gets a number. Right? When you touch another one, it gets a different number. And they're all uh, arranged in collections so you can, when something moves, you just get an event and you can check this number and see which finger moved. It makes some sense. And also, if you release a finger, you also can see which finger was released because it was given a number. If you touch it again, you get a different number. So it's, it's quite easy to, to arrange this in collections. And because of the chassis one hardware requirements I talked about before, you know you have at least four touch multi-touch. Okay, there was a discussion the other day about if you if someone needs more, more touches on a phone. So Apple actually showed the multi-touch with ten fingers on the iPad, or something, and Microsoft has done this with the Surface computer. If you've seen that, so and, and someone was actually trying to do this on a phone. It didn't really make sense to tell you the truth. First of all, if you use all ten fingers, you're gonna drop it. <laughs> okay, because you have to hold it somehow. But anyway, uh, for me, I've never used more than three. So four should be enough for now. And you get four at least. Some manufacturer may decide to put five. Okay, this is a minimum. So if you make a game, you know you have four. That's it. And that's all you have to do. That's how you process your touch event. Okay? One line to get the state of the touch panel. No hardware configuration, no nothing. And then, this is a for each loop, so for each touch, you see, if it has been pressed or moved, do something. And this is the position of the touch, and this is the ID of the touch. By the way, all these slides, because I have some code in the next three slides or something, uh, I'm gonna put them on my website. So you don't need to, to write anything if you, if you don't want to, okay? Oh, by the way, you're done, this is touch, <laughs> okay? It's that easy. And of course, this, this state could be released, just as well. Another example, how to use the accelerometer. Uh, in the beginning, I was a bit confused of what an accelerometer is. I don't know if you have ever worked with a Wii or something like this to see what an accelerometer is. An accelerometer actually measures acceleration, which is interesting because if, if something moves at a constant speed, it has zero acceleration. It's weird, so it doesn't, it doesn't detect movement. <laughs> anyway, 
So, you still get an event when you, something changes, which is mostly all the time. You have three axes. That's how it works. Another funny thing is that when you have the phone on the table, the acceleration is not zero, zero, zero. Why? Because you are in the Earth's gravity. And it's always being pulled to the Z axis. So your acceleration is zero, zero, one. For some reason. Okay? Just, just saying this because it's quite useful. Of course, if you flip it around, it's minus one. Which is also useful if you want to know. Anyway, but then you, you play with the details. You're going to see this if you ever try this. Okay? What do I do here? I make a vector. X and A has vectors. Excellent. Okay? You get the three axes in one event. This is how you actually say when the reading of the accelerator changed, please run this, this handler so I, I can get these changes in my vector. That's how you start it. Dot start, right? And that's how, oh, this is the same, sorry. And that's how you, ah, this is how you would actually use it. Okay, this is the reading you got from the event. And that's how you stop it. <laughs> okay, that, I mean, it's so ridiculously easy to show these things. I mean, it's dot start, dot stop. Okay, a few links. I said before, these are going to be available, the slides, if you want them. They have amazing examples about everything in there. The tank thing I showed you is an example of how to shake the camera. The tank I, I compiled before. Okay, so you, you're gonna find, if you are interested, great stuff right here. Really good examples and very easy to follow. And what they have also done, which is sta staggering, if you ask me, is something like 30 or 40 videos of how to develop from scratch if you're not even a programmer for Windows Phone. It's like, so they start with the basics. This is a compiler, this is an editor, and they get you all the way through to make your first game. So for you, it should be, and people who have actually used the XNA, they, the first thing they say is, this is ridiculously easy. It shouldn't be so easy, it's a crime. <laughs> okay? Four interesting links, they're gonna be on the slides, you can get them. Now, uh, <coughs> I'm gonna put this as an example. That's my last game. This is on the marketplace. It's doing well. I would say considering. I will talk about what do I mean by considering in a second. But I would love to show this to you if you don't mind. Okay, I have a, we made a small video about this. Should I have, uh, I should have some sound here, but yeah. it's just the music, it's not. Yeah. I don't know how well the game design is, you should tell me. Okay, as you understand, the whole point is to go up. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, we're using the accelerometer to control this. Left, right, and that's it. That's about it. There's nothing more for the control, so it's quite simply to play. I have it on the phone here if you want to play afterwards. We also got some uh, interesting uh, awards for this. It was awarded the best game of January 2011 by a website after a vote. Anyway, they like it. Now, uh, your game designers, you have designed a nice game. How, how do you proceed? What do you do? You might find this stuff interesting, okay? You want to start doing stuff. First thing, you have to register as a developer with Microsoft. This is a, a, a process similar to, to Apple's, but not similar to Android. Okay? That's interesting. It's free for you guys. It was free for me as well. Normally, you will have to pay $99 every year. 
Okay, for you it's free again. So you should do it anyway. It's free. Uh, by the way, this this developer registration gives you access to your Xbox development as well. It's the same thing, same ID, same everything. So if you register as a developer, you can connect to your Xbox and debug your games there as well. Okay. You don't need any more this gold club license. Also. Sorry, you don't need any. Uh, two or three years before you needed this uh, gold. Uh, gold Gold. No, uh, it's a license for the login. But uh, this license is only for students, so you have to sign up with oh, your. Okay. You have to connect your Windows Live ID with your um, student's uh, email address. Here. Yes. So uh, if you plan as a university to bring games out, I don't know what's uh, what's the condition. Yeah, now it's just uh, for two or three years before. Uh, as a student, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know about the rest. I mean, yeah, as I a student, through the DreamSpark program, yeah. you just uh, this just works, <laughs> okay? Yeah. For Swiss students, okay? I mean, for not Swiss students, students in Swiss Swiss university. I'm not Swiss, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, second thing you have to do, you have to read the guidelines. They can be a little strict. I will tell you about this, and then you have to develop your game. In this order. Why in this order? Uh, this is quite different from Android. Uh, unfortunately, right now, if you get a Windows phone and you don't register as a developer, you will not be able to debug your game there. Okay? I don't understand why they do this, but I guess it has to do with licenses and piracy and whatever. That's, that's my guess. So you have to register and then you will be able to declare your phone as a development phone and then you will be able to debug your game there. My first game, I actually wrote it uh, using a Zoom HD. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's an MP3 player that Microsoft has as well, that you can also develop using the XNA for. And it has an accelerometer and a touch screen, and, and it's also a quite cool MP3 player. And I don't work for Microsoft. <laughs> okay, okay. After you develop it, and while you develop it, you should consistently check it against the guidelines. Why? I have this in the next slide, sorry. Okay, next thing, you have to create some artwork because it requires some screenshots and some icons and stuff like this. And then you send it to them so they can evaluate it. When I say evaluate, they're not gonna say I don't like your game, I don't accept it. That's the last step. Uh, they will say, does this fit the requirement? Okay. For example, lots of blood is not accepted. No, actually they, they accepted one game and now they have pulled it, which was quite a cool game, but it, it was quite gory. Heads flying off, and, uh, which is cool, but uh, they, they actually, yeah, they dropped this. Anyway, so the last one is cross your fingers and wait, because you will wait for a few days. And then somehow get some money. Okay, I have three dots there. Okay, these are the steps to success <laughs> or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> General tips, what I say from my experience, try to make something good, okay? Many people have just say, okay, I'll make an app and I will be rich, okay? And I recently wrote an article about this. It doesn't work like that, <laughs> okay? You have to make something good. You have to make something that people want to play, for starters, okay? You could be original and find a great original idea or it may be not. For example, the game you just saw, it's not very original. There is a well-known <laughs> game on the iPhone which is called the Doodle Jump, okay? And it uses more or less the same mechanics, game mechanics. Now, uh, of course, we have put lots of stuff that Doodle Jump doesn't have. So we, you could say that we took it further away from Doodle Jump. And people want to play a game. And another thing is that Doodle Jump is not on the Windows Phone yet, so they don't have an alternative. Anyway, it doesn't matter. If they want to play it, it's good. That's what I mean by good. That's what I said before. If you don't care about if your app is going to be played by many people, you just want to try your luck and see how this works and stuff like that, for educational reasons, make whatever you want. But if you want something for people to buy, to play, and you become famous, of course, uh, you should 
try to make something, consider it, design it well. Okay, you know how that works better than me, maybe. And don't make any tip calculators. Okay, they have more than enough. Or any fart applications. You have no idea. It's the first thing that everyone makes on these phones for some reason. Okay. Tic tac toes. Or tic tac toes, yeah. <laughs> but someone actually made a tic tac toe with five or six different shapes, and that was that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't play it, but anyway. <laughs> the third application was the uh, very successful story that I think. Which one? The third. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> like two hundred. <laughs> Well, maybe the first one, or maybe yeah, if you <laughs> my, my suggestion is don't make any. Okay, the people have done this already here. Okay, it, they're very easy to make as well. You just make a button, and you load a WAV file or an MP3 file, and you it's like three lines of code. Okay, so some tips about the marketplace. The marketplace is something like the App Store. Uh, it has similar rules. Okay, I said that before, it's quite important. Why? Because very small things that you might have forgotten on, or didn't see or whatever can get your app rejected. Like, you have to handle the back button in a specific way. If your game plays and you hit the back button and it uses a smart bomb and destroys everything because this is what you thought would be cool, you will get your app rejected because in the guidelines it says that the back button in game should pause the game. Okay? In the menu structure, the back button should take you to the previous menu. Okay, these are guidelines that Microsoft has put in there for consistency. So users of Windows Phone know that back button goes back. It makes some sense, okay? Or they could tell you that your uh, icon, for example, should be 99 by 99 pixels which is true, this is one of the icons they ask. If you give 100 pixels, you can get your app rejected and wait for, for, for a week for nothing, for example. So please read them carefully if you're interested. Test them for bugs. Okay, this is general game development tips, but uh, I just wanted to say that in the marketplace they do check for bugs. Okay, and they have found a weird bug in my first game, which I could never have found. They actually used four fingers on the screen on a menu for 100 times and then it crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, they did it. And, and not only did they do it, but they sent me instructions. It's on the next slide here. This is what happens if your app fails, like in my case in the first time. Okay? They sent instructions, very clear instructions, we did this, and then we did that, and then we did that, and then it crashed. We tried it five times, and it crashed five out of five times. Okay? It's embarrassing, but it's useful, because you can repeat the steps and debug. Okay? Follow the steps, fix the problems, and test it again. And then send it again. Okay? That happens when your app fails. You can do this as many times as you want, with a small exception. Uh, the exception is that Microsoft allowed until recently only five free apps from every de developer. You could not develop 1,000 free apps and give them. They tried to give free apps to a normal number. Now they have boosted this to 100 apps, <laughs> like a few, few, few days ago. Okay? But still, for the free apps, you I think you don't get free resubmissions as many as you want. I think this 100 counts the resubmissions as well. Okay? Parenthesis closed. Your app gets accepted. It's a very nice feeling. Okay? <laughs> Congratulations. Of course, this doesn't mean that you just, you know, sit back and be rich and famous. It could, but it's not. So you should update your game. You should fix the bugs that the users will find and not Microsoft. You should add new features so that people like you. They will provide feedback. There is an uh, online uh, built-in feedback system that people, it's, it's on the Android, it's on every platform, that people can actually give you from one to five stars and say that I like your game because of that, I hated your game because you suck, or something. Listen to what they say, to the point which this is, you know, normal, and try to satisfy them. You know, it's, it's marketing. 
And of course, you, they could give you ideas for future expansion or future games or whatever. And advertisement, you have to ad advertise your game because if people don't know it exists, they will not buy it. There is an injustice. I don't work for Microsoft. I said this three times already, okay? There is an injustice in the marketplace. Some of the games are made by bigger companies. Okay, sorry about this. <laughs> Uh, and these companies actually get more access to features than the rest of the debe developers do. These are the Xbox Live games. They get Xbox Live achievements, they get Xbox Live, you know, stuff that the rest of us do not get. They're more expensive games, by the way, as well. And these companies are listed more than the rest of the games in the marketplace. When you actually go to marketplace, the first thing a user sees is Xbox Live games. It's the default. So most people buy these games. Okay? So advertise more. I'm not gonna say any more because, you know, I don't know much, I'm learning myself. So, the big question, this is Switzerland. Is there money to be made by the whole thing? Okay? The short answer to this question is not yet. Maybe there is, but not yet. I will give my reasons. People may buy your game, okay? It might be amazingly good like mine, and they would buy it, they will. But the marketplace is small right now. The users are not too many. The phones are not in every market, okay? Uh, for example, uh, no, we'll talk about this, ah, sorry. <laughs> uh, some of the countries do not even have official support for Windows Phone. If you ask your friends, my friends don't even know it exists yet, but it's growing fast. Right now, the Windows Phone 7 marketplace is the fastest growing app market ever. It has, it's been around for three months, four months, and it already has 9,000 apps, which is quite cool. So this is partly because of the XNA, if you ask me. And of course Silverlight, because they are not new technologies, they have been around for years. Many people are, they, they, want, they, they knew them, they knew what they were about. Many people were developing for the Xbox, they, they knew Silverlight for the web, okay. They have C Sharp, they have Visual Studio, they have free tools, they have promotions like, you know, free for students and stuff like that. So people actually jumped into that because it's fun to develop stuff for Windows Phone, at least for me, okay. Another thing, right now, uh, Microsoft has an advertisement system, so you could give your game for free and put some ads in there, but right now you will not be able to get paid outside of the US. Another injustice. Okay, this will change, and also I have some information that you could put in-app advertising right now using the SDK, and you will start accumulating this money and when Switzerland gets supported you will get this money okay but right now you will not by the way these are uh, this is for the next one expansion for this marketplace is on the way why first thing recently Microsoft make a big deal with Nokia everyone knows Nokia many people swear by Nokia especially in Europe and Nokia said that their primary mobile operating system is not Symbian anymore, it's Windows Phone 7, okay? They're going to be making phones for Win with Windows Phone 7 operating system this year, lots of them, and Nokia has a very good reputation uh, about the hardware and their design and stuff like this, okay? These are some uh, renders, these are not real phones, but they say that the first one might look like this. <laughs> okay, doesn't matter small detail another one an update is coming any day now still waiting this week hopefully we don't care about this but it's gonna have some other cool stuff one of the updates it has a CDMA CDMA is a network thing that some of the uh, bigger biggest carriers in the US use like Sprint and Verizon which are millions of users okay so things are happening that's what I'm trying to say so if you ask me, you want to be in there when this happens. You want to have your games in the marketplace when 20 more million users come in one day and want to find a game. 
they want them you want them to find your game okay so I'm just saying it's a good opportunity for you because it's free and it's fun so you know do it as a academic thing that's that's what I did okay I mean I'm not making any money for my game so far okay and it's a pretty successful game if you ask me if you look at the numbers I mean not the sales numbers but the ratings but okay I'm, I'm, I'm opti optimistic it's gonna get better okay another thing the platform is usable Android is cool <laughs> okay but for me many of my friends say okay Android is cool but I'm trying to send an SMS for the past hour and for some reason I can't and the problem is they're not geeks they're normal people I mean my mother couldn't use an Android if you ask me why because the menus could get a little complicated for her I'm not saying it's a bad platform it's a very nice platform I like it I love it I'm not using it okay so for the average Joe as they would say Windows Phone is usable it's fast and it's usable you can do the things you want to do like make phone calls like send emails and stuff like this as easy as an iPhone if you ask me and it's only version 1 okay I also I, I already said that developers tools for me are the best out there in order to actually put the Android SDK you have I think there are like one or two pages of instruction on how to set up stuff okay these tools are two clicks some people like this <laughs> right I, I know I do okay and in the future you will make money okay uh, I love discussing about this stuff that's the only reason I'm here by the way I love discussing games, I love discussing game ideas. So if you want to get in touch with me, that's my website. Okay, I'm gonna put these slides up there. Uh, that's my email. That's my, my games email. I have a normal one as well. Okay. I haven't set, a, set up a proper website just for the games. I'm just using my normal website and I have a section for, the, for my games. Okay, I'm not a company or anything. Just saying. Okay? So. Okay? <laughs> if you have any questions about the stuff I've talked about and you remember them now, you may ask me. Or you can always email me. If there are no questions. Oh, cool. How long um, are the uh, for the iPhone? Are there any, any additional costs for the whole testing process? Any additional costs? Yeah. No. No? No. No costs whatsoever. I've, mm -hmm. I have not paid a single franc for developing my game. I mean, if you don't count electricity, <laughs> for example. Okay, no. Uh, testing is part of the, of the submission thing. And if you are a registered developer with Microsoft, for Microsoft, you are a paid customer because you have paid $100. Now you're a student, you haven't, but it doesn't matter for them, you are a paying customer. So they, they have actually hired an external company to do all this stuff. I don't remember the name of the company. Game Trust? Same Game second? Trust is at least the company you have to register and send the ID to. No, that's, that's different, that's part of the registration. Yeah. Jail Trust is a company that when you register, they have to verify that you are who you say you are, or something like this, but it's part of the registration. There's another company that they use for testing, which is not is transparent to you. You send your stuff to Microsoft, and they do this internally. But they have lots of people who do just that. They get new games, they test them, they run them against the guidelines, and they reply to Microsoft that this fails because of this, and then they reply to you. Okay, but no, it's no no extra cost. So that's count for every platform for Xbox as well. Uh, no, it's, it's different. It's a different... Uh, I have never sent a game for Xbox for being <coughs> tested. Okay, I've just made a few games for me. <laughs> okay, just to play around. I have one on YouTube I can show you, but I don't have internet. Sorry. Anyway. I <laughs> can have the... There is a... Uh, Good. Uh, yeah. If I find that. <laughs> I, uh, I guess there are two different things. The Xbox Arcade Live and of course the yes. other Xbox which is the, 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 the Xbox Arcade Live it's something like the Windows 
Xbox Live games I talked about, you have to have a specific agreement with Microsoft. The other one is the community games, as it's called, yeah. where everyone can send stuff and it's being actually peer reviewed by others. So gamers play other games' games and they accept them or not. So you can actually play other people's games and say that you like them or not. As a student, you can't. Just saying, if you register, you can. Xbox Live is 10,000 for every round of reviewing. Community games are not available in Switzerland yet. Actually. No, that's another thing. Yeah, I forgot to, to mention this. You cannot send community games from Switzerland, but you are close to Germany, so <laughs> <laughs> you have relatives and stuff, right? <laughs> Someone. Okay, let's see. Um, well, I think I was calling it Football Three Sixty. No, still? There you are. So this I made with XNA before Windows Phone came along. <coughs> That's two years old or something. But I'm using the same tools, exactly the same tools. This is my my uh, uh, my screen, my my TV. I'm just taking a video. You're a fan of Kiko. Yes, I am. <laughs> it looks like Kiko, doesn't it? Who knows Kiko? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. You actually know there's a Kiko uh, association, right? Really? Of course. The, the, we have World Cups every year <laughs> in, in different countries. I thought the other kickoff was one uh, was a football game that was quite fast. That was for Amiga and was obvious. Yes. And people still play it. It's that good. And it's extremely fast. Yes. So I try to imitate kickoff, yes, because I love kickoff. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. My initial thing was to actually try to use as